Hey guys, today we're going to take an in-depth look at the image processing features of the Samsung Q8FN television. Now this is a 4K television, meaning it has 2,160 lines of resolution. But most content today is typically in Full HD or 1080p format, which is 1,080 lines of resolution. So that means the TV has the job of doubling each line of the picture before displaying it on the screen. So what this does is it typically magnifies little bits of distortion in the picture, little grainy or blocky artifacts that are left over from the compression or the magnification of the image. So what you can do is enable digital clean view in the settings of the television. This feature applies a light blur to the picture so that it cleans up any of those distortion or grainy artifacts and gives you a much cleaner image. So you can turn it off completely, but you can also set it to low or auto. I typically set mine to auto because I find this feature works quite well. The one trade-off is that you will lose fine details in the picture because they'll now be blurred out. But I find if you're sitting on a couch far away from the TV, it doesn't even matter. You won't notice a difference. It looks much cleaner with this feature enabled. Now, the next topic we're going to discuss is motion interpolation. This is a 120 hertz refresh rate panel, meaning it can display 120 frames per second, but most content today is typically in 24 or 30 frames per second. So what the TV has to do is double or triple or multiply each frame of the image to add up to those 120 frames per second. And what ends up happening is you get a juddery motion effect, which can be quite distra distracting when you're watching. So the TV has a feature called Auto Motion Plus, and what this does is it interpolates what would happen between two frames of the image and sort of guesses what to display in those frames instead of just repeating the same frames over and over again. So you can turn this feature off or you can set it to auto or custom. I find the auto settings are a little too aggressive. Uh, they give you a very strong soap opera effect. So I prefer custom and I like to adjust the settings myself. Blur reduction. This is for your 60 frames per second content like your football or hockey sports that you'll watch over an HGTV signal that are uh, high frame rate, high motion. But jet reduction is what you'll typically use mo most often for TV and movies. Uh, I like to set mine to 4, but you can bring this all the way up to 10. If you have it at 10, you'll get that strong soap opera effect, which can be quite dis uh, distracting. Uh, so I think 4 is, the good, uh, is a good compromise between smoother motion without looking overprocessed. So one trade-off with this feature, if you have it all the way up to 10, you will see there's also a lot of, uh, during fast motion scenes, you'll see a lot of distortion when hands are waving or there's something moving quite quickly across the screen. It doesn't always guess what motion to put there perfectly, so it can look a little distorted. Um, but I don't find I have much of an issue with uh, the setting at 4. The next topic we're going to discuss is local dimming. So this TV has a full array local dimming feature, which means it can turn off sections of the backlight completely to give you perfectly dark blacks. And this feature works very well. Uh, you can't turn it off completely, but you can set it to low, standard, or high. And I don't really see much of a difference between those settings, so I just leave mine on high, and it works great. You'll notice this most with movies that have letterboxing, so black borders on the top and the bottom of the frame. It will be able to turn off those sections of the backlight completely to give you perfectly black borders on top and bottom of your image. And this is great if you're watching a movie in a dark room. You want those black borders completely black on the top and the bottom instead of gray or partially lit up, and it works great for that. There are some trade-offs though. You'll find that with subtitles that overlap the very bottom border, a black border of a letterbox movie, uh, as well as the image, you'll find that this lower half of the text will be a little bit darker than the top half of the text. But this doesn't happen very often. If you don't watch movies with subtitles, uh, you don't have to worry about it. Even if you do, you will get used to it and it's really not that distracting. You'll also notice that with end credits for a movie where you have white text scrolling up a black background, you'll notice that the dimming will 
uh, come and go. So the brightness of the text will uh, sort of brighten and then diminish and then brighten as more of that text appears on the screen. It's a constantly adjusting to give you a good compromise between black levels in the background and brightness of the text on the screen. That can be a little distracting as well, but I also don't typically watch a lot of end credits for movies, so it's not a really big issue. Now, another thing you might notice is something called Black Crush. If you watch a lot of movies, uh, for example, set in space where you have uh, bright highlights like stars amid a black background, uh, the local dimming feature will, uh, will crush some of those fine details like stars in a space setting uh, because it will be trying to give you a perfectly dark black for the space background, um, but in uh, compromise it has to... Uh, lower the dimness of those stars so much that you might not see them at all. This isn't a really big deal unless you watch a lot of movies in space. Uh, I very rarely ever notice this happening, um, so it's really not, uh, not a deal breaker in my opinion. And all of these features combined also will have some difficulty with really low resolution uh, dark scenes. So if you're watching a DVD, for example, with a lot of dark scenes, um, you'll see that it will start to look really choppy motion with a lot of blur on the screen. Um, I just find that these features don't work great when you're dealing with those really low resolution, older uh, medias like DVD. Um, but I typically don't watch a lot of that stuff. Uh, I typically watch mainly HD 1080p content, and for that, uh, all these features work very well. That's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching my video. Please like and subscribe to my channel and post any comments you have in the comments section below. All right, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.